I think it's Zipf. It's a great name. I might change my name to Zipf. Patrick Zipf. Oh, could you imagine? Oh, if I was called Patrick Zipf. According to the Oxford English Corpus, the 10 most popular words in the English language from 10 to 1 are I have that in a and of to be and the number one word is the. If you didn't notice, there's a common theme between these widely used words and that's that they're all pretty short. The longest don't consist of four letters but the majority of them are simply three, two or even one letter in length. And they're not only short from a spelling perspective, but also from a speech perspective too. All of them consist of just one syllable. In fact, if we carry on looking down this list of common English words, the first one to be made up of more than one syllable is about, which is ranked 45th most common. What you can gather from this is that by and large, the words we use most often in English tend to be on the shorter side. And this isn't seemingly a coincidence or sheer randomness. There's a couple reasons as to why our most common words tend to be on the shorter side. A couple of those reasons are more well researched and documented. And one of those reasons is my own hypothesis. So why don't we get my own crackpot theory out of the way first, shall we? My own belief is that it all has to do with the origins of these words. Most of the most common words in English are from really basic concepts and ideas, ranging from simple pronouns and prepositions to basic articles. These words represent things that we would have been talking about in the very early stages of language development, and even before we were probably talking about our natural surroundings like water and trees. The fact they derive from some of the early stages in the language can probably explain to us why they are so short too. They come from a time when language was still pretty simple. A step further than the grunts and groans we link with prehistoric people, but definitely not the stage we're at now where we can say all kinds of complicated things without trying too hard. And wow, I did that in one take. I was planning to do that in multiple takes for comedic effect, but no, we did it in one take. Great, let's carry on anyway. As language was still in its infancy, it meant that words still had to be pretty small, simple, and easy to say. We even see this today when kids start speaking, and all they can do is make babbling sounds. Imagine that, but for civilization as a whole, trying to establish language in the first place. This can even be seen when we look into the etymologies of many of these super common words. Take the number one most common word in example, the. It doesn't have a single easy to consume etymology, but instead evolved naturally over a huge period of time from some ancient proto-language to become the word we have today. This is a similar story for most of these other short common words too. I won't go over them all here because that would be really boring, me just going over like 10 really old words with boring etymologies. No one wants to watch that, right? So you've got this video instead. But you know, if you do, if you do want to know that for yourself, you can either just trust me or go check out the online etymology dictionary for yourself because, hmm. That's a hell of a website, man. I love your online etymology dictionary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to do this without you. Thank you. But people still being fairly primitive speakers, plus trying to coin words for really basic common concepts, could have come together to create these words that represent fairly basic ideas, which consist of just simple sounds when spoken, and just a few letters when they are eventually put to paper. This is just my own theory, however. I really need to stress that. I'm just putting together ideas I have and coming up with this hypothesis. So why don't we look into an explanation by someone who's a tad more learned than myself? But before we look into that, I want to say a huge thank to my most recent super thanks lever. Say thank you to super thanks lever Christine Brown 3359. Super thanks are a great way to make a one-time donation to help support Name Explain, and they can be left directly in the comments section of any of my videos here on YouTube. However, Patreon is the best way to financially support Name Explain, and donating just $1 a month gets you ad-free videos, a chance to say what names are explained, an exclusive monthly newsletter, and your name at the end of these videos. All of that can be found at patreon.com forward slash name explain, which will be linked down below. All that helps out tremendously. Thank you. Anyway, the person we have to thank for more concrete information is a linguist named George Kingsley Zipf, which is a terrific name by the way. While mainly a linguist, he delved into the darker arts too, and by darker art I mean maths. He was very interested in the statistics of language and eventually concocted something known as Zipf's Law as an equation and it looks like this. And don't worry if that confuses you, it means nothing to me too. 
What Ziff discovered after doing all this research and creating his own law is that the frequency of a word is inversely proportional to its rank, which means the first most popular word, which is the in our case, occurs twice as much as the second most spoken word, and the second most spoken word is three times as common as the third most common word, and so on and so on. Honestly, when I began writing this video, I didn't think I'd end up talking about weird maths equations or any kinds of nonsense like this, so cheers Zip. But from doing this research, Zip also noticed that words were much more common tended to be shorter too, and he believed that the reason this was the case was simply down to saving time in conversations as a whole. He dubbed this the law of abbreviation, which is far more self-explanatory than his eponymous law. This means that the more we have to do something, the quicker and shorter that thing becomes. This can apply to many things grand and simple. Think of something like brushing your teeth. A menial task which we do so often, we have found quicker ways of doing it, like with electric toothbrushes and stuff. In our case, this law applies to the words we use. This selection of hugely common words we say over and over have slowly gotten shorter to save us time in communication. And that also ties into the fact that while these words are super common, they aren't super important. Most of them tend to be pretty empty filler words which are used more for grammatical reasons than to actually convey what we are saying. This has resulted in these common words just being rushed over and not really cared for so we can get to the meat of what we are trying to say. And it only makes logical sense that these common, unimportant words would be so short. Imagine if the word the in English was composed of like 17 syllables or something you had to say it all the time. That would be super frustrating, right? Well, having those common, unimportant words be really short helps our language be far less infuriating. And while I've been calling these common words unimportant, from a grammatical and linguistic point of view, they're vital in language. If we imagine a conversation or sentence as some sort of super huge skyscraper, then these common filler words are kind of like the foundation, unseen, unappreciated, but pivotal to keeping the whole thing up while words like subjects and the objects are the building itself that everyone marvels at. Though maybe I'm being too uptight about language. Maybe we should just scrap all these unimportant words and just get to the meat of our conversations. Sure, you could say, I have a ball, which uses three of the ten most common English words, but you could also just shout ball and wave it in the air, and you'd pretty much get the exact same point across, you know? As Kevin from The Office says, I waste time, say lot word when few word do trick. But that's just my own theory and the fear of someone far more educated than myself as to why so many of our common words are so short. And do you agree with this or do you think they're short for a completely different reason entirely? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, please share the topic down below which we could cover in next Monday's Name Explain video. It could be about literally anything and the topic can be as niche or broad as you like. I will then choose three of those topics and place them in a poll for my patrons to vote on. Then the winner from that poll will be the topic covered in next Monday's Name Explain video. You can vote in that poll as well as enjoy many other great benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash name explain which will be linked down below and by donating just one dollar a month. Thank you. Anyway, that's more than enough for myself, but don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where I'm NameExplainYT, and don't forget to join the Facebook page Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Okay all, take care. Looks all good in focus, I think so anyway. That, in, a, and, so, how did I get this wrong? I, have, that, I went to I too quickly. Is it seemingly a coincidence or sheer randomness? Randomness? Well researched and documented. Documented? Three, three, five, three, three, five, five. Zip. I've checked how to pronounce that. I think it's Zip. It's a great name. I might change my name to Zip. Patrick Zip. Oh, could you imagine? Oh, if I was called Patrick Zip. Man alive, that'd be wonderful. Word is inversely, inverse, inversely proportional. Inversely, inversely. Honestly, when I began writing this video, I didn't. Oh, I slapped my fine just then. Told you I'd have a prop for this bit. But I feel like I'm just. Am I still in focus? I had to get up and get my prop. Though, maybe I'm. Slapping my fine again. I am wearing. I'm wearing shorts. I'm not just naked down here in case you're wondering. I'm slapping my thighs. Sorry. Common English words. But you call it. Cool, we're done. I'm gonna go throw this Pokeball around. Should I throw it at the camera? Could that be funny?